So what do we have in this box? What do we have in this box? Uh, I suppose I should have undone the catch before I turned the camera on, because that's not the world's most thrilling thing. It's got this little screw in here holding it closed. And what we have in this box is a little old GWS Pico stick. Uh, no wind, slow flying. We promise no wind today, although it's still kind of misty, so we'll see. We're going to assemble him and uh, find a battery for him and see what we can do. Okay, we got him assembled, which is not the easiest thing in itself. Getting those wing stocks shoved into the little plastic connectors is a little tricky in us getting in such a way they're going to stay. And as you can see, he's, he's kind of seen better days. He's a bit... Oh. His servos don't look in very good shape either. I don't know. Whoa, that's never too good, is it? Hi, hi. Um, I have flown this guy a number of times. Uh, you know, he's a three-channel absolute slow flyer, really more, again, more an indoor plane, but it is dead still this morning, albeit somewhat misty. Uh, can't remember. He might take off off the ground. Then again, he might not. I, that I can't recall. Not overly keen on hand launching him because I'm not sure how he's trimmed and whatever. And I never like hand. I never like hand launching planes. I never like hand. I really don't like hand launching planes when I don't know how they're trimmed. God, those wings bend a lot. Just hope they don't fall off. But I'm pretty sure I put them on right. But but you can see when they take up the the load. They bend a lot, those wings. They're adopting a considerably higher dihedral latitude when they're supporting the weight of the plane in the air than when they're on the ground. They droop when they're on the ground. But they, when the plane's weight is hanging off them like this, they curve up. <sighs> He should be able to go slower than this. I'm probably going faster than he needs to, because he is very much a slow stick. It really is still kind of misty. Five. Well, I'm also flying this guy probably lower than I was flying the little microplanes, and the mist is clinging near the ground. But uh, also, it may be that the sun is actually bringing out mist. Some that sometimes happens. You got mist. The sun comes up, and as the sun first comes up, the mist gets worse, but then usually it clears once the sun gets up a bit above the horizon. The sun's up behind me now. But if anything, the mist seems to be getting slightly worse at the moment rather than better. But it is very much clinging to the ground. A little bit of, a, you know, as soon as you get a little of altitude, you're more or less above the mist. Uh, this guy is strictly a going round in circles sort of guy. Well, figures of eight if you like, that's okay, but I am not going to even think about trying to loop this guy. Not, no. Eh, no. I don't know, but maybe... Time remaining, four minutes. You know, when it's first made and whatever, but there's no way in heck in this condition that I would risk looping this guy. Wings would probably fall off. I'm a bit afraid they'll fall off with just ordinary flying. And they're just, you know, they're very thin wings with wooden sticks, and then the wooden sticks are sort of like barbecue skewers thing kind of things. And then they just connect to the stick body by a little plastic attachment that presumably came in the kit. I didn't build this guy from the kit. Um, bought him... I bought him with a bunch of stuff off a guy on Kijiji. I think there was a bunch of a guy on Kijiji. Now, and, and he didn't build it either. He bought a bunch of stuff off some other guy, or the estate of another guy at a garage sale or something or other. He bought a bunch of RC stuff thinking he would do something with it. 
it wasn't very modern RC stuff. It was kind of a bit of a jumble. So the guy who, the first guy who bought it, never did get anywhere. I don't think he ever did much with it at all. He had a pile of pile of old RC stuff, three old FM transmitters, and all sorts of stuff. Unfortunately, it cost probably some of it cost quite a bit. Of, not this, but some of it cost quite a bit of money originally. But none of it was worth much money now. I bought it all off him as a job lot and did what I could to use bits and this was one of the planes that was in it. There were about five or six planes sort of in various states of disrepair and whatever. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, So who knows what the history of this is. I have a feeling even the guy who the stuff originally belonged to probably didn't build this from the kit because it didn't seem to match up. Well, maybe it did, who knows? But it didn't seem to match up terribly against the other stuff he had. Well, so who knows? And obviously that box, somebody's just built that box. Uh, to, it's not, it was good to have somewhere transporting it safely, but the, it's a bit bulky, that box. It's just built out of pink, pink insulating foam. Uh, well, yes, I don't know. I'm flying off a two-cell uh, 1100 mi milliamp hour LiPo. Now, again, this is the age this is. It must have flown off some kind of nickel Nimh NICAD or something battery originally, because I don't think they had LiPos when this kit came. It's a GWS kit. The GWS Pico stick, the smaller version of the slow stick. Uh, I don't think they had LiPos when this kit came out, so... Uh, although, mind you... You know, this has a brushless motor in, so I'm pretty sure this has a brushless motor. So it's probably not even the original motor. I don't know. It has a brushless motor. Well, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe they did release a brushless version. That's a brushless motor. I'm pretty sure I'll have a look at it when I get it down, but I'm pretty sure that's a brushless motor. Time remaining. One minute. Yes, probably true. We should probably bring him in. Um... So, but I'm running him off an 1100 milliamp hour LiPo, which I've got on pretty near the front because uh, there you go, can't say fairer than that. He even landed quite nicely on the grass. And a, a big old GWS slow flyer propeller on him there. Uh, I got the battery, as I say, the battery you can see, the battery is more or less half and half, it, it, half in front of the wing and half not. Uh, yeah, and I've got an orange receiver on him. I tend to use lemons now, but I think I put that on. I think he had an FM receiver when I got him. Couple of servos back there, and that is indeed a brushless motor and a brushless motor mount. I don't know. Did GWS? Yeah, see, hmm. I don't think, I think that's the original motor mount from the kit, which I see has got rather a nasty crack in it as well. But it seems firm enough. Um, yeah, especially since we're not putting much pressure on it. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that, that motor didn't come with the original kit. Well, I'm almost certain it didn't. It would have been some kind of brushed arrangement originally. But I don't, I'm pretty sure I didn't put that on. I think it was something I'd got the brushless motor on when I got it. Let's just try and give him a... Throttle cut off. Yeah, so he's got a little bit of thrust there. Throttle cut on. Anyway, and the propellers, what? GWS 10 by 4.7. Mm, fair size propeller for such a small plane. Here. See, he's getting uh, mist settling on him, water and whatever. Anyway, I don't know. I kind of like these things. It's, uh, and he flew okay. GWS Pico stick. And that's the battery. The Wild Scorpion 1100, two cell, down to 7.78, so we had pretty much used the battery there. Not in there. You could have gone a bit further, but it's not like, certainly not out. 
you were quite safe, but, uh, and what was the time on that? Uh, six minutes. Six minutes and we landed him with just a little bit to, st to spare. So the timer's about right. I mean, you, you probably, which is, I mean, it's almost surprising it uses that much, but you wouldn't want to be running him a lot longer. 